The crunch of parched earth and whisking of sand across your boots are the only sounds you've heard for days. This is the state of the world, or whatever is left of it, quenched in almost eternal darkness long ago for reasons too archaic and eldritch for you to understand. Only the greatest of elders have fleeting memories of the last days of light. Before the skies darkened, heat turned to cold, and finally the roaring of the ochre and Hades fires ceased. Now you make your pilgrimage, carrying messages to and from your home village of Dreskathak to Golog. You are paid handsomely in loom for what your peers call the most dangerous job in the world, but you stay humble knowing there is worse. Water miners, fire tamers, watchmen. All of these jobs you've seen claim lives at an alarming rate, but these are the signs of your times. You remember the old traditions speaking of the miracles of the old world, the dead brought back to life, great flying machines that could span the sky in moments, gardens of paradise dotting the hills. But you have never found proof of their existence in your time of dredging the boneyards, the tall spires of death that cluster together like ancient headstones to your ancestors. You may never know what their religions were like if they had any, for the stained altars, smoke-laden tents, and mystical visions of your time seem to be far from what your ancestors intended. You may never know what their wars were like or what they fought over, for you do know the ancients warred and warred ferociously. The evidence of great destruction scars the land, fields littered with the undisturbed bodies of their fighting machines, but as to how it was made this way only a guess could be ventured. You have seen your people war in the shadow of the ruins of the ancients. But your tribal skirmishes and simple weaponry would be insignificant in the face of their struggles and astride their mighty weapons. You may never know how the technologies worked, for their broken pieces sail for high prices so they may be used, abused, or hopefully understood by the wise men of the great walled cities in the Ikor Dunes. The sky groans. The light of the stars flicker and disappear again, and you know that night has fallen. You lay your head on the sand and dream of a better world. In times of trouble, mankind has always relied on the treasures of the earth. When the Hades fires scorched away the blood-soaked oceans and torture the clouds to flight, your ancestors fled to the deepest and darkest pits, recesses, and boreholes scoured into the ground to escape the oncoming destruction. And there they found salvation. Nestled in the folds of the earth, deep cavernous recesses shimmered like gems. Water remained, and mankind would need it for the dark times to come. Your life is unquestionably hard, and almost predestined to be short. Your father was a water miner, your father's father was a water miner, and even his father was one as well. Your people are enslaved to your need for water. You work tirelessly day in and day out in cold, damp, and claustrophobic conditions to satiate a parched world enveloped in darkness. Your hovel, the home of your people, changes hands and banners, but your people are kept safe and distant from the conflicts, for even the blood barians of the deep waste believe you to be sacred. Your conflict is with the elements, with time, and with water, Steam pipes can scald you to death. Catwalks can give way to the deep abyssal caverns. Disease or sickness constantly hounds you, and the denizens of the Underearth often fight tooth and claw to protect their subterranean homes. You have lost friends, family, lovers to this watery grave, and you pray to whatever gods listen that you may not join them in such a way. Such is the life of a water miner.